Hey friends, welcome back. I'm Joy. And I'm Holly. Welcome to Jolly Gardens. And today we're going to do a garden tour. So we grow year round here in Northeast Texas. We're in zone 8A and um, we grow primarily food crops, vegetables, but we also grow lots of flowers for the pollinators and things like that. So we're going to take a walk around the backyard and the back lot. We grow on about 0.6 acres and we're just in the middle of a small rural town. So on this side of the house we have a very large, very old fig tree and it's got tons of figs, it's just loaded, you can see them up in there. And I say it's very old but if you see the two um, trunks, that's where it died back in 2021, it used to be just two trunks and then all of this new growth is since that Texas snowmageddon in 2021. Pretty cool, huh? This is an apple tree and it's got some fruits. But it's actually gonna come out this year because it's got some damage to it. So we're gonna try to propagate some of these branches and then remove that this year. This is a pepper bed and we need to weed and mulch, but we grow a lot of our peppers in this roughly 100 square foot space. Got some peppers going on. So if we go through this gate, this is our backyard. Off of the uh, back patio here, this is the tea yard. We have some lavender and lemon balm, lemon verbena. Holly put some drip irrigation lines in here, but I need to stake them down where they need to go. Um, so we have some mints in these pots here and some just different herbs and basils and things that we use for tea. This is our strawberry tower. our leaf planter tower and it's got some chard and some herbs in it right now some lettuce we've let go to seed need to collect those seeds and this is kind of an extension of the tea garden we have some chili pekin peppers which are starting to put on flowers and then this is a hibiscus roselle and this roselle will actually get taller than this fence. We use those flowers to make tea. And then off the patio over here we have the okra bed, which right now has um, lots of sunflowers in it. Those are sunflowers, not okra. The okra is actually about a foot tall down there if you can see it. And then if we swing around, this is a green bean bed. On the end here, I have some peppers. That's where we were growing our garlic. That's about a two by four space. And then this uh, is trellised with a cattle panel, 16 feet long. And we've got beans in it. These are all, all of these beans are for drying. And then to go up the trellis, we have some peas. And then over here, we have some soybeans for edamame. These are our determinate tomatoes. And we have them in barrels. We just support them with cages. They're almost done for the season. And then they'll, we'll pull them out and put carrots in these barrels. These are our muscadines. You can see we have fruit on them. And we just uh, let them grow on the top of the fence. So planted these last year. They go up from here and 10 feet in each direction. Um, this is actually a gourd. <laughs> our compost is on the other side of the fence. 
and that's a gourd that uh, kind of escaped and went crazy. In this corner we have a pomegranate tree and some ornamentals. This is one of our tomato beds. In these green pots we have some eggplants and then we have basil around the bottom. That's what those short plants are. And then tomatoes going up the strings. And so the strings just wrap around and they go up and they're tied off at the top. And we built this structure out of conduit and maker pipe connector that's really cool. We have a video on how to do that if you're interested. And over here, this, this right here, all of this is partially going to seed. And there are tons of pollinators on it all day, every day. But this is another tomato bed. And in this one, we also have some peppers and some Swiss chard and chives. And if we go down here, we have lots of ornamentals, some cannas, bougainvillea, um, lots of daylilies along the fence, more cannas. This is our, uh, we call it the bird bath bed. This is all perennials that come back every year. And these lilies are kind of on their way out, but they are huge. And they're gorgeous. And last year they only got as tall as the bird bath, but this year they're a good two feet taller. They're amazing. They're called Casablanca. So there's our tomato beds. If we keep going up the fence line, we have on the left a little bed with a bunch of flowers. And this bed is a hot mess. It's up against the fence and we don't like that and we're gonna redo it this winter so we've kind of just neglected it and let it go. But these are our, some of our cherry tomatoes and you see we like to put the marigolds in the bottom and then we have these tomatoes trellis so back on that side we have our two tomato beds we have tomatoes against the back fence we have this arch some fruit trees blueberries this is just a seating area under the pecan tree because we have this giant pecan tree that's been here for ever and this is just a seating area in the shade we have some citrus trees an olive tree another fig tree a loquat that need to be planted these were all on our south side patio but they were just getting baked so we moved them over here just for a little while. Here's some basil ready to go in and another round of sunflowers. Just a little patch of zinnias for fun. So there's the sunflower okra bed. There's that bean bed. It's looking pretty cool. So we have, going up the arch, we have cucumbers. Here's one, that's a silver slicer. And there's a bee doing its job. Thank you, bee. There's another silver slicer. So, then we have yard-long beans. We just harvested them yesterday, so it's not really a lot to look at. Oh, here's some. So they will bloom. You get two or three blooms on it, and then they'll make these beans. And they'll get giant, but we like to harvest them about 14 inches. So that's 
the arch. And then out here we have some kale that we need to remove. Basil, different kinds of basil. That one's called purple ruffles, I believe. And we have some dwarf tomatoes. And if we walk around this side, oh, that bed there in the middle has blueberries in it. We walk around this side, it's more dwarf tomatoes, basil, chard, etc. Some of the fruit trees in the backyard we have pears. This is the fig. We have peaches. So two pears, two peaches, and a fig. And so now we'll go into the back lot. That's where the greenhouse is. So there's not a whole lot going on in the greenhouse at the moment. Uh, we'll do a greenhouse tour another time. So just outside of the greenhouse we have these two beds. These are asparagus and strawberries. We planted all of that this year. And the asparagus is just ferning right now. It's so pretty. And these strawberries, I'm actually going to pull them out of this bed because we don't like them in there. This is an area we're working on. And this is an apple tree. That's a persimmon tree. We want to have an area that's um, eventually going to be shady where we can just relax out here. Um, so we're trying to set that up now. We're gonna sheet mulch with this cardboard, put soil and mulch on it, and uh, line it with the rocks on the outside so there's an edging of rocks and uh, plant in it at some point. This is the wildflower slash pollinator garden. And this was super easy to plant. I did this from seed, I just sprinkled the seeds all day long. There's tons of pollinators here. The sunflowers I planted and transplanted, or I started them and transplanted them into here. These are all from Sunflower Steve. They're gorgeous. And then I do also have two elderberry bushes in here. And two plants of amaranth just for some different color. Oh look, there's a squash vine borer. Boo. Look at this guy. Isn't that gorgeous? Cute, cute. So, that's a look at the wildflower garden. I want to go all the way down this fence at some point. I think that'd be beautiful, but this was just a test because I didn't know how it'd do. So this, you see all these big leaves. There's a compost pile there. There's a compost pile here. And all of these big leaves taking over this fence and this fence is kakuzi squash. Kakuzi is an edible gourd. Make a lot of like Italian soup recipes out of it. And you can fry it just like you would yellow squash. Then this one, I believe, is a volunteer cantaloupe. So we'll see what we get out of that one. All right, so let's go all the way to the back of the back lot. Okay, so that corner up there is where we were with the wildflower garden. So now we're all the way back here. So this is a plum tree. There's an apple tree over here. This we call the corn plot, even though we've never quote unquote successfully grown corn in here, we still refer to it as the corn plot. On the back here, we have a row of okra. You never have too much okra. These are cantaloupes here on this first row. Then we have several rows of peppers. 
this is the spot that I need to weed and I have lots of cardboard that I can put down. These are all of our peas. These are um, two rows of purple hole peas. That's what we grew up with. We love purple hole peas. And then a row of zipper cream peas that we're trying out this year. So there's a look at that. I'll show you what's on the other end when we get to that end. These two green beds are Vigo beds and they have blackberries in them. We have another compost pile back here, but this is a row of figs. We're kind of babying along through this heat. There's two more fig trees over there in between the two Vigo beds. This guy is a plum that I haven't quite given up on, but I probably should. I think I just waited too long to plant it out. On this end, we have some watermelons, eggplant, and leftover tomatoes, and we're just gonna use these tea posts to kind of trellis those up. But that's a look at this back section. And then we'll go look at this arch. This is Holly's green bean arch and she's got uh, bush beans in the beds and then growing up she's got rattlesnake pole beans. They're pretty much done right now and we will rip them out and just replant another round. I've got a volunteer sunflower here and a bee doing his job. You go bee! So, this arch here is for melons and cantaloupes, so we've got some watermelons and we'll just let them sprawl out and grow around this and these will grow up. More melons, cantaloupe, personal size watermelons. And if we go over here, this is where we grow potatoes in hay and we thought we would try sweet potatoes and see how those work so we'll let you know this mess <laughs> we had carrots in here and these are some that we've let go to seed so they're looking ugly but they'll give us lots of seeds so that is pretty much the back lot So that's all for today friends let us know in the comments how you like the garden tour if you want to see like a, a longer garden tour with all the names of the fruit trees and the plants we grow um, just let us know what you want to see if you haven't already go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button um, that really helps people see our videos and encourages us to make more videos so thanks for stopping by we'll see you next time